Hello everyone. Last week we described cloud identification, but what if you're looking up at the sky at night? If you've been interested in learning about the constellations of the night sky, listen up, because today I'm going to be covering 33 of the 88 officially recognized constellations. We'll start with a popular one, Orion the Hunter. In one version, he was placed in the sky along with his faithful dogs and animals he hunted because the gods felt sorry for him, since he was in love with someone who didn't love him in return, and died via stepping on a scorpion. The scorpion, by the way, was placed on the opposite side of the sky so it wouldn't hurt Orion again. Another version of how he got there involves a jealous Apollo tricking Artemis into killing Orion. The constellation has an interesting reddish star at its left shoulder, Betelgeuse, which should be bright enough to see on most nights due to its approach to becoming a supernova. Beneath Orion's belt, you might be able to see the Great Orion Nebula. Next is Ursa Major, the Greater Bear. People commonly know a portion of this one as the Big Dipper, which isn't a constellation but an asterism, a distinctive group of stars. In the Northern Hemisphere, you can trace a line from the two stars on the end of the Ladle's Cup to the North Star. To help slaves escape from the South during the American Civil War, the Big Dipper was commonly referenced in songs where it was said to follow the drinking gourd to get to a better life. The hidden message, basically, head north to escape slavery. After is Conus Major, the greater dog, who is one of Orion's faithful dogs. The brightest star in this constellation is Sirius, right at the dog's collar. So for any Harry Potter fans, you can probably easily associate Sirius as part of the great dog constellation. Then we have Conus Minor, another one of Orion's dogs, although the couple of stars hardly look like a dog. I don't know, maybe you can see it. I think it's rather discriminatory against house cats though, considering there are multiple dogs but not one cat in the sky. Felis isn't an officially recognized constellation. Now we reach Poopies, or the Stern. This was originally part of a larger ship constellation called the Argo Navis, until the International Astronomical Union officially defined the 88 constellations, splitting the Argo Navis into the separate constellations Carina, Vela, Pyxis, and Poopies. Speaking of the Argo Navis, we reach another piece of the original constellation, Pyxis, the compass. Some don't see it as a compass and call it the ship's tiller instead. But Lakaya, the one who named it, liked technology, so a compass it was. The constellation contains T. Pixidus, the most active of all reoccurring novae. Now we get to the Argo Navis' sail, Vela. Vela contains part of the largest nebula in the sky, known as the Gum Nebula. Some claim that the nebula glows with the help of the Vela supernova remnant, a wispy nebula formed by a supernova that occurred about 12,000 years ago. Although not part of the ship, Columba the Dove was associated with the Argo Navis as well. It was said to forever lead the way west for the ship. It also is referenced as Nova's Dove, referencing the biblical dove that told Noah the Great Flood was receding. And let's jump to Leo the Lion, one of the zodiac signs. It's believed that this was the Nemean Lion, which was killed by Hercules as one of his labors. The constellation used to appear in the sky in the summer solstice for ancient Egyptians. Since the Nile floods around that time, they would worship the lion. Leo Minor, the lion cub, was actually added much later than Leo. This constellation was named in the late 1600s by Johannes Hevelius. The Hydra, or water serpent, had the body of a hound, a hundred heads, poisonous breath, and regenerating heads on top of that. On one of his labors, Hercules had to deal with cutting off each head, burning the stump to prevent regeneration, and smashing the final immortal head under a rock. As of right now, Hydra is the largest constellation in the sky, but it used to be even bigger until, like the Argo Navis, it was split into four constellations, Sextons, Crater, Corvus, and the current Hydra. Speaking of those constellations, we get to Sextons, the Sextant. This constellation contains the spindle galaxy with a bright striking center. Another one of the original Hydra constellations was the Crater, or the Cup. Although its stars aren't particularly bright, this represents the cup of the Greek god Apollo. Now we get to Cancer, the Crab, another zodiac sign. Interestingly, as Hercules was trying to fight the Hydra, the Greek goddess Hera sent this crab to distract him since she didn't like the hero. Unfortunately for Hera, the crab grabbed onto Hercules' toe only to be squished by his foot. So for the sake of the crab's effort, Hera placed the crab in the sky. It's the faintest of the 12 zodiac constellations, but it contains the beehive cluster, so that's interesting. Arga the charioteer is known as Erechtheus, son of the Greek god Hephaestus. It was believed that Hephaestus created the chariot to move himself about more freely, since he was born crippled. The constellation includes Capella, the sixth brightest star in the sky, as well as the flaming star nebula. A more recent constellation is Fornix, the Furnace. It was named in honor of Antoine Lavoisier, who was guillotined in the French Revolution, and created out of the faint stars near the constellation Eridanus. Speaking of Eridanus, this river is associated with the Greek myth of Phython, who attempted to drive the sun chariot of his father Apollo or Helios, but caused so much damage that Zeus killed him, resulting in his body falling into the Eridanus River, or the River Po in Italy. The constellation is usually depicted as flowing from the pouring waters of Quirius, it contains the Eridanus Supervoid, the largest void known. In addition, there's Akerner, one of the brightest stars in the sky, and the Witch Head Nebula, a well-known reflection nebula. 
Here's another zodiac sign, Taurus the Bull. This one's got some differing implications. He's one of the animals hunted by Orion. The Greeks saw the bull as Zeus's disguise, though, as he had been when he fell in love with the young mortal Europa. It also represents the bull who is the father of the Minotaur, half human, half bull. Then the Egyptians saw the constellation as the god Osiris, while the Chinese called it the White Tiger, or Great Bridge. Taurus includes the Seven Sisters star cluster known as the Pleiades. This one is Sculptor, the Sculptor's Workshop. Sculptor isn't associated with any myths, but its stars have it their own planets, and it contains the Cartwheel Galaxy and the Sculptor Galaxy. Adding on to the Sculptor theme, we have Kylon, the Chisel. The constellation contains a strange quasar, essentially a gigantic black hole that apparently lacks a host galaxy. You might be able to see this constellation in the Southern Hemisphere. Now we have Antlia, the Air Pump. Not kidding, this was named after the Air Pump invention. Yay inventions! Although it's one of the smaller constellations and not very bright, it includes the Antlia Dwarf Galaxy, the Antlia Cluster of Galaxies, and some Spiral Galaxies. And then we have Triangulum, which is... yeah, it's a triangle. For such a simple constellation, it had a lot of names. The Greeks found it represented the Greek letter Delta, so they referred to it as Deltaton. Eratosthenes thought it represented the Delta of the River Nile, but some people saw it as the island of Sicily off the coast of Italy which brought the name Sicilia. This was explained by apparently Ceres, the Roman patron goddess of the island, begged Jupiter to place the island in the sky. Then the Babylonians saw it as more of a plow. Strange that so many people saw it as something different since it's not that bright of a constellation. It does contain the Triangulum Galaxies though, so that's something. Next is Gemini, the twins, and yet another zodiac. Castor and Pollux are the twins in this constellation, two Greek heroes that traveled with Jason and the Argonauts. They were placed in the sky when Pollux asked his father Zeus to share his immortality with the dying Castor. The inseparable two contain in their constellation the Eskimo Nebula, Jellyfish Nebula, and Medusa Nebula. This one ought to be a favorite. Monoceros the Unicorn. Didn't think there was a unicorn constellation? Think again. In 1612, a Dutch cartographer named Petrus Plonkius decided that the unused space between Orion and Hydra could use a unicorn. A unicorn because of its appearances in the Old Testament of the Bible. The constellation contains Plaskett's star, which is one of the largest binary stars known. It also has the Rosette Nebula, the Christmas Tree Cluster, and the Cone Nebula. Then we have Lynx the Lynx. Dang, this one's easier to translate than a triangle. The naming behind this one is actually kind of clever though. Since the constellation is relatively faint, Johannes Hevelius claimed that only those who have the sight of the lynx could spot the constellation. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, I challenge you to go find it. It'll be between Ursa Major and Gemini. Yet another easy to translate constellation, we have Phoenix the Phoenix. This one was named by Petrus Plonkius, the same person who named the unicorn. They say the phoenix was a bird of incredible beauty that could revive itself through combustion. If you live in Australia or South Africa, try to find the phoenix during the Southern Hemisphere summer. If you get too far north though, it'll be difficult to see. The constellation has a black hole candidate and some galaxy groups, so it should be worth finding. Going back to more easy to find animals, we have Lepus the Hare, one of the animals hunted by Orion. As a result of Orion's death, the hare was also placed in the sky. The constellation contains Messier 79, a large group of stars clustered together, which actually might not be part of the Milky Way. Now we have Ares the Ram, another zodiac. In Greek mythology, this ram was sent by the god Hermes to rescue two children who were beaten by their stepmother. It was later sacrificed by one of the children, where its golden fleece ended up being the very prize the hero Jason recovered. The constellation itself has several meteor showers associated with it, including the May and Autumn Ariatids. Reaching another zodiac, we've got Pisces the fish, as in multiple fish. Fishes. Fishes, plural. Whatever. This constellation represents the Roman deities Venus and Cupid, when they were either transformed into fish or were rescued by fish to escape the monster Typhon. The Babylonians saw it as two fishes joined by a cord, much like the Roman myth. The constellation contains a colliding galaxy pair, fitting for the paired fish constellation. Going deeper into the sea theme, we've got Cetus the sea monster. After completing his quest to slay Medusa the Gorgon, the Greek hero Perseus came across the woman Andromeda, who was chained to a rock to be sacrificed to Cetus the sea monster. Perseus ended up killing Cetus and saving Andromeda. Cetus has also been identified as the biblical whale that was said to have swallowed Jonah. The constellation contains a barred spiral galaxy and has a few meteor showers associated with it. Chained to that myth, there's Andromeda, the princess of Ethiopia, or the Chain Maiden. The constellation contains the Andromeda Galaxy and has many stars with their own planets. It's connected to the Andromedids meteor shower that was first spotted in 1741, but has faded since. If you were wondering why Andromeda was chained to a rock to be sacrificed to a sea monster, her mother would be the main one to blame. 
Her mother was Cassiopeia, queen of Ethiopia. Cassiopeia bragged about how she was more beautiful than the sea nymphs. And since those sea nymphs were the Greek sea god Poseidon's daughters, the sea god flooded Cassiopeia's lands. After visiting an oracle, Cassiopeia's husband discovered that sacrificing Andromeda was the only way to stop Poseidon's anger. The Romans saw the constellation as Cassiopeia chained her throne in the sky. So when it seemed like she'd flip upside down, they saw it as punishment for her vanity. The constellation contains the supernova remnant Cassiopeia A, the Heart Nebula, the Soul Nebula, and the Pac-Man Nebula. And for our very last constellation today, we have Perseus, the hero who rescued Andromeda and slayed Medusa the Gorgon with the help of some cool gadgets from the gods. This one happens to be my favorite, not just because it's my namesake, but it's annual Perseid meteor shower, which is actually coming up in a few weeks, typically peaking around August 10th. So there you have it, 33 of the 88 officially recognized constellations. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more content related to getting science, art, and or math concepts into your life. And check out my website, Steam for Sam, for more content. See you next time.